And that is some uh, good music this morning, isn't it? If you like that, just stick around. It's going to get better. Um, we've asked um, Pastor and Donna to step to the back this morning real quick so we could make an announcement that they couldn't hear. Uh, so if y'all will, go ahead and turn the live stream volume off because I know they're going to listen to this later.
Good morning, good morning. And the people in the house said amen. This is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it in the name of the Lord. You're smiling, you're looking good, and thank the Lord for that. October the 23rd, which is on a Sunday, we're having a lunching for all the volunteers that want to help with the Family Fall Festival. And uh, so that's going to be immediately after church on October the 23rd. This is, again, for all the volunteers that would like to help in the Fall Festival. The Fall Festival is going to be October the 29th from 3 to 6 on that beautiful Saturday. Amen. And then, too, I wanted to let all the brethren know, remember, our men's fellowship is coming up. Brethren, our men's fellowship is coming up next Saturday on the 8th at 8 o'clock. Next Saturday at 8, on the 8th at 8 o'clock. And it's going to be at the uh, uh, Landmark Restaurant. So please be, uh, you know, be there, and that would be a, gr a great blessing. We have several that have given their heart to the Lord rededicated their lives to God, and we thank the Lord for what he's doing in the lives of our brothers and sisters. Amen. So we have, I want you to be thinking about being baptized, and then we're going to be talking about the baptism and also church membership in the upcoming. Just let me know if you'd like to be baptized. Brethren, let me know if you can make it to the prayer breakfast next uh, Saturday morning at 8 o'clock. I need to know today. May God richly bless you. Are we ready to worship the King of glory? Amen. We're ready. Amen. Would you stand with me? Oh, hallelujah. Could we just lift our hearts to him right now? Heavenly Father, we love you, Lord, and we're grateful to you for the love of God in our hearts. And oh, Jesus, today I pray that you would touch us through the very power of the Holy Spirit of God. Lord, I realize more every day of my life uh, that with myself uh, it is impossible, but with you all things are possible. And Lamb of God, we know today that as we praise you, may God arise and his enemies be scattered. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Oh, hallelujah. Just give him a big praise offering right now in the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Just come on, come on and keep standing. We're just going to enter into the presence of the Lord and just glorify his name when we all get to heaven what a day that's going to be hallelujah in the name of Jesus give him another praise
that you're in the house with us this morning. And then sing my song, my Savior God.
the house today. My Lord, we worship you. Father God, we thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. My Lord and my God, we give you the praise for what you're doing in the house. We thank you, Lord, that the Spirit of the living God is permeating, Lord, this house and those that are watching by live stream. Your blessing and touching in the name of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Bless, I pray, as the ministering of your word continues to go forward. Bless the children, Lord, as they depart with their leaders, dear Lord. Touch them. Thank you for every mom and dad and every parent in the name of Jesus. Thank you for everybody in this house this day in the name of the Lord. God bless you. God bless you, children. You can go. Now let's sing it one more time. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, oh, all we see, how great, how great is our God, how great. and tell them, hey, God's in this place. Amen. Chloe, I want you to join me right here, please. Amen. Jessica, would you join me right here, please? Amen. Hallelujah. Sprina, would you join me right here, please? Amen. Just face these beautiful people. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, God's been doing a work around this place. How about it? Amen, sister. What's God doing for you? close to my family again. I've been here every Sunday, I'm getting closer and closer with the Holy Spirit, and he's been working not just in my life, but in everybody I come in contact with. Amen. Isn't it great what God is doing? We love you. Amen. Sabrina, my, how God's blessed you and touched you. Testify. fire gets hotter and hotter but then after a while you realize that God's in the fire with you and it's oh, okay yes. <laughs> and you realize that you're going to come out and he's not going to leave you too long and he's not going to take you out too soon God's answering my prayers and I see it before my eyes and and you know the, the devil tries to come in with doubt and confusion but I know that God comes with confirmation he's bringing in my family and I just want to praise him for it he's doing so much for me Amen. Amen. Woo. Look what the Lord has done. Jessica, been a great week at 411 Nutrition Center. Amen. The Lord's been coming. Amen. Thank God for you. Tell us what God's done for you. Um, he's opened my heart. I fought it for a long time. I feel like it was the devil. I knew what I wanted, and but I had doubts. And I finally just let that doubt go and opened up. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Woo, I'm telling you right now, isn't oh, God good? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I said, isn't God good? My, my, my. I thank the Lord for our arms and our hands. You see, sheep beget sheep. You know, these ladies are here because somebody in this congregation touched them. Amen. I had uh, I made a visit one day, 
and uh, this was back a number of years ago, and the, the people told me, said, Pastor Moats, thank you so much for coming by. Said, but it would be nice to hear from someone else. Said, we, we know you're here. We know that you're available, but we would like to see some of the sheep of the flock. Amen. And I'm thankful that the Armurchie Church of God in our community, people are seeing the sheep of the flock making a difference in people's lives. Amen. Give him a praise offering. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. To all of our friends and loved ones by live stream, welcome. We love you and we thank God for you. But isn't it wonderful to know that God's alive? Amen. He's everything this choir sang about. He's everything that you just worshiped him for. He's everything in our hearts and in our lives, and it is absolutely phenomenal what God is doing in the hearts that will allow him. But there's times some trepidation. If you're not careful, we'll try to throw up a flag. You know, you think the football game's going great, and then all of a sudden some referee blows that whistle and throws one of those flags, and have you ever noticed it stops right there? But then the coach goes out and says, wait a minute, you're wrong. I've had some coaches in bygone years, boy, they'd, they'd take care of the referee. Let me tell you something. In your spiritual walk with God and in your life with the Lord, when the enemy tries to come out and throw a flag, the Lord just steps out and says, wait a minute, they're covered by my blood. They're sealed until the day of redemption. They're living by faith. My Lord, and they're my son, they're my daughters. Oh, hallelujah. Moses is dead. Moses is dead. Joshua 1, please. And look at verse 2. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore, arise. Everybody say arise. Go over this Jordan. Underscore that. You and all of this people to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. I want to take my time and lay a solid foundation because of those that have given their heart to God, those that have just received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, those that have started walking and walking by faith for a number of years. And the reason I say for a number of years because it don't matter if you just started this race or if you've been serving God for a number of years, we need to understand destiny is being played out in our lives. You see, God speaks to Joshua, and he tells him it's time to move. I had a fun day Wednesday. It was a power-packed day, and, and the seniors, as they were coming in, and you can go on our Facebook page and see some beautiful pictures of our lovely seniors. And I said, what did you hear? What did you hear Sunday? And several of them all of a sudden just bellowed out, You see, beloved, the enemy don't want you to move. He wants to keep you right where you're at and even less. He don't want you to move forward. He wants to keep you busted, disgusted, and broke in the name of the Lord. But it's time to understand that with our destiny before us, timing is everything with God. Amen. If you pulled that cake out of the oven too soon, it's no good. If you pull the biscuits out of the oven too soon, it's no good. You say, Brother Moats, what cake are you talking about? What biscuits are you talking about? I don't cook like that no more. Well, beloved, wherever you go, they still cook them. Even if you go to Jack's and see that precious, precious 80-something-year-old black lady that works back there in the back that I've had prayer with and for many mornings she said preacher I tell you right now if you take them out too soon they're not done and if you wait too long they'll burn timing is everything well God is just like that oh give him a praise offering hallelujah what he was saying here Moses is dead but my destiny for you is not dead 
we get our hopes and ad- aspirations and, and everything in someone else, and then when something happens to them, maybe they become a big disappointment to you, or maybe they let you down, or maybe they do pass away and they go off the scene of life, go on to be with the Lord. You feel as though you've got to give up. You just got to quit. But, beloved, let me tell you something. Our God eternally exists as God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. He is a friend that sticketh closer than any brother. He is the sheep to the sheepfold. He is the chief physician. He is the door to the way that leads to life everlasting. And he never leaves you. He never forsakes you. He goes with you all the way to the end. So our hope is not in man. Our hope is not in some leader. But our hope is in God Almighty. And destiny is being played out in our lives. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Moses is dead. It's time to move. And it's time to move now. Turn with me to Jeremiah 29 and 11. Write it down in your notes because you're going to need it this week. Jeremiah 29 and 11, for I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. There are plans of peace and not evil. I hear you, Holy Spirit. There's somebody sitting here battling with something right now. And you're wondering, dear Lord, how can I get away from needing this quick fix? How can I get away from this habit that I have and this addiction? It's more than a habit. It has attached itself to me mentally and emotionally. I'm here to tell you right now, the Lord said he's got plans for you and they're plans of peace and they're not evil. Just give it to God right now in the name of the Lord and say, Father, deliver me in Jesus' name. My Lord, deliver me in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Plans that I have for you. Plans of peace. And they're not evil to give you a what? A future and a hope. Amen. You know, I I talk about my mother, my dad, and my mother-in-law very often. Especially my mother-in-law. She and I enjoyed good food. And it doesn't matter if I've been with some of you or or been at the fellowships that we've had or been in your home. I I think about her when she had sat down to a good meal. She said, this is good to me. And I thought when she closed her eyes this side of heaven and entered into the portals of heaven, how she must have squalled out and said this is good to me. Her destiny had been fulfilled. Her life had been made complete because she trusted in the Lord God Almighty and she cried out to God in due time. You see, beloved, there's something about mankind today. They're stubborn. They want to fix everything. But I'm here to tell you, we can't fix everything. In the spirit spiritual world, it takes God to take care of it. I cannot save myself. I cannot heal myself. I cannot baptize myself in the Holy Spirit. I can't keep myself sanctified. Amen. But I'm saved by grace. I'm saved by the mercies of the Lord God Almighty. The other morning when Jessica cried out to the Lord and gave her heart to God, that was the mercies of God. That day that Chloe cried out to God, that was the mercies of God. That day that you and I cried out to God, that was the mercies of God. You say, well, what is the mercies of God? It's when he has compassion and he is touched with the very feelings of our infirmities. He's touched by our addictions. He's touched by our hang-ups, and he is moved by our sin. The Scripture said we have a high priest who is touched with the very feelings of our infirmities, who has passed once and for all into the holies of holies. Did you realize this morning that you have the opportunity to enter the holies of holies? You don't have to go in through the window. You don't have to go in through the back door. Amen. You don't surprise God. 
Because when you're saved, beloved, and your sins have been washed away, you can sing that song. Now I can go into the holies of holies, and I can make my petition known. Why? Because Jesus became the Passover lamb, and Jesus became the high priest that sacrificed the Passover lamb. And on the third day, he rose victoriously over death and over hell and over the grave. Oh, hallelujah. And we must understand that we're walking in our destiny. But look over to your neighbor and say, but you got to get up. And you've got to get over this Jordan. Tell them, you got to get over this Jordan. One, two, three, you've got to get over this Jordan. Let's practice it again. One, two, three, I've got to get over this Jordan. Amen, I've got to get over this Jordan. Go with me to Mark 10. Look at verse 46. My, 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 this is good stuff. Watch this. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Timing is everything. Remember that. Watch this in Mark 10 and 46. And they came to Jericho. As he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great multitude followed them. Blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the roadside, Doing what? Begging. Mm. Mm. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, <laughs> I love it, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. But now look at verse 48. This is what we're hearing today on all four points. Many warned him to be quiet. Mm. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. My Lord. Look at verse 49. So Jesus stood still, mm, and he commanded him to be called. Now, what was he? He was a beggar, but what positioned him as a beggar? His blindness. And Jesus didn't say, bring him to me. Jesus called him. You got to see that. Then they call the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer. Here's that word. Rise. Amen. You got to get up. You got to have some motion. Beloved, if we had all listened to our body this morning, none of us would have been here. Can I hear an amen? That good, cold, fall, crisp air, and that enemy of ours known as the alarm clock goes off. And you said, I've had a rough time. I didn't sleep good last night. Or if you were like me, you fell the other day and fell up against the post of the door or the, po the porch, and you're sore from top to foot, and you're relying on the anointing of the Holy Ghost to get you through the day, and you got to get up and say, this is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it in the name of the Lord. Some of you have had sleepless nights because of your sons and daughters. Some of you have had sleepless nights because of the finances that's on you. Some of you have had sleepless nights because how the devil is trying to create a Jordan in your path. But God says, get up and cross over this Jordan in the name of the Lord. I'm calling you to a higher level. I'm calling you to a higher height. I want to bring you into the fulfillment of the destiny that I have for you. Oh, shout amen. Glory be to God. Arise. He is calling you aside. Now watch this. Read it out loud with me. And doing what? And throwing away his garment. Woo! That'll preach. You getting it? And throwing away his garment. <laughs> oh my. I, I, I hear you, Holy Spirit. The Lord keeps saying, just, just hold on. Just hold on. <laughs> oh, Lord. 
There ain't no grave going to hold our body down. <laughs> Woo! When Jesus calls, Mike's getting up. When Jesus calls, my mom and dad's getting up. When Jesus calls, Danny's coming forth. When Jesus calls, if I'm dead and gone before then, I'm getting up in the name of the Lord. I'm going to throw it aside because the master has rung the bell. The master has blown the trumpet. The master has called me home. The master has touched and moved and ministered. My and throwing away, throwing aside, getting rid of his garment, he arose and came to Jesus. You got to underscore that. He's still blind. Doesn't say anybody's helping him. You got to be hungry to get to Jesus any way you can. Listen, if you're watching me by live stream and saying, Pastor, I'll be there as soon as I clean my life up, honey, just come on. Amen. Let God clean your life up. Amen. Come withered, come halt, come sin, come addicted, come blowed out, come high, come however. Let hell or high water dry up. But Jesus will save you, and Jesus will redeem you, and Jesus will sanctify you, and Jesus will fill you with the Spirit of God. My Lord. So Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. Jesus said to him, Go your way. Now he's still blind. He says, Go your way. Right now, your faith has made you what? Whole. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! My, 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 I wish you could just feel a touch of what I'm feeling. My Lord, I said, I wish you could just feel a little twig of what I'm feeling right now. Hallelujah. He said, your faith, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Blind Bartimaeus, what is it that you were hoping for? What is it that you were speaking, the evidence of things not seen? He said, all I know is that I heard Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I heard Jesus. Too many people's got their eyes off of him and on her and on that ministry and on the other ministry now let me tell you something unless God builds the house they labor in vain that build it it's all about him let God arise and his enemies be scattered his enemies of addiction his enemies of whatever of the past God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can begin to imagine or think all I know is Jesus <laughs> timing Timing. Who's that I hear? Jesus. 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 Well, I know I'm sitting here blind. I'm sitting here broke. I'm sitting here disgusted. I'm sitting here so disgusted that I hear him coming. <laughs> they tell me that if somebody's blind, they're hearing increases and while they were whispering he, he, he kept hearing Jesus Jesus for he had heard about Jesus who had raised the dead. He had heard about Jesus who had moved and ministered and touched so many. He had heard about Jesus the only begotten of the Father and he said if I can just cry out <laughs> People's too lazy now to cry out. People's got too much in the bank to cry out. I got a phone call the other day that sometimes this month that there was going to be the largest crash of the of, of the financial of the finances of the world that it'll be worse than 1929. I responded and said, well, it can't keep going like it's going. Something's got to give. We go through life as though we're insane. What does insanity mean? 
Insanity means keep doing the same old thing the same way, hoping for a, a change. And we get up every day knowing that Jesus is coming. We get up every day knowing that things can't keep on. And we hear this sound saying, start doing this or start doing that. Then you hear this sound saying, that. there's a lot of winds blowing in our world today. And you don't know who to believe. And this is why, as believers, we better seek the Word of God. Because the Lord did say that in the last days there would be famine, there would be pestilence, there would be all kind of things. He says that this is part of the ushering in of the coming of the Lord. There's nothing wrong with you having some extra green beans in the cabinet. Amen. And by all means, please get some toilet paper and bounty towels. Amen. <laughs> and we and our heart starts filling with fear. Well, what do we what should we do about our finances? What about what about this? What about that? We've got to come to a point that after we've done all we know to do, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. My Lord, we've got to have the faith to understand Jesus is still walking through the land. I don't care who's in the White House or on the throne of England. I don't care who's in Russia or who's in China. I serve a God who is still on the throne. Jesus Christ is the King, and He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. But we have to prepare and we have to pray because God is leading us to our destiny. Watch this as I hurry. And throwing, oh yes, thank you, Lord, aside his garment, throwing aside, he arose and he came to Jesus because Jesus is calling. But before, he said, all it took, was the call. Let me tell you, all it takes is for God to show up. Amen. All it takes is for you to reach out as he's passing by, and you'll find he's not too busy to hear your heart's cry. In the name of the Lord, you just reach out and say, God, oh, let me just touch the hem of your garment. Oh, Lord, oh, let me take you back. Even though the dead, oh, even though it's a dead situation, you feel like there's no hope. All hope is gone. Jesus said, just take me to the tomb. And when he cried out, come forth. Ah, oh, Lord, when the master and the life giver and the peace speaker speaks, you've got to be obedient. He came out, Lazarus did, hopping, and he got to Jesus. Beloved, when Jesus calls, you respond in the name of the Lord. My Lord. Throwing away his garment. His garment identified him as a blind beggar. You see these signs. Back during the summer, I was turning right there at Chick-fil-A. Over there where Shalosky's sandwich shop used to be, right there at that, going up that, toward Staples and all up in there. There was a young man, some of you saw him too, I'm sure. Brown by the sun. Holding up a sign. I pulled in there, I said, what do you need? He said, I need a gallon of water. My heart was filled with compassion. That sign was identifying him. I went and got him some water. I got him some other things. I told him about Jesus. You see, the sign identifies. You might not write it on a cardboard. You may not write it on a whatever you make it out of. But your face and your body language identifies a lot about you. Can I say that again? The words that you speak identify you. Out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth speaketh, the Scripture says. You see, what he was doing, he was throwing away disappointments. He was throwing away lost dreams and hopes. He was throwing away all of the despair and the agony, the past. 
He was throwing away depression. He was throwing away carnality and worldliness and lust. He was throwing away past failures and past pursuits. He was throwing away old relationships. If you change playgrounds, you've got to change playmates. He was throwing away old paths. He was no longer going to be a beggar because Jesus. I said because Jesus, my Lord. Donnie, how many times have you been stabbed? How many times have you been shot? Once stabbed, once shot. How many motorcycle wrecks? Boy, he's just a one, one, one. Got run over twice. Corey, how many times you been in jail? Never mind. <laughs> Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me. It was just in time. I'm going to praise his name. <laughs> I traded my sign today. Come on and praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Oh, give him a praise offering. He traded his sign. He passed his sign. He threw his sign away. He tossed it aside. He said, arise. Time and I got to get up now. I can't wait till he gets to the outskirts of town. I got to get to him now. I'm just listening because my hearing has become keen and increased. I'm getting to him. Amen. That my heart's hungry. I got to get to him. They didn't say that one caught him on the left side, one on the right side. They just said, boy, they, they just didn't want him to have nothing. Did you realize that there's people that's cold and indifferent and lukewarm and don't want you to go to the next level? They get upset when God blesses you. That's, that's carnal. I thank God for all the blessings he bestows on all of you. Can we hear an amen? Amen. I said, I thank God. You see, to be worldly and to be carnal and to be lustful and to look down upon somebody. Honey, I, I thank God. God's blessing them. Amen. God's touching them. It doesn't mean that God's not blessing me. It doesn't mean that God's not touching me. Amen. We often get our eyes set on the wrong thing. We got to keep our eyes on Jesus. He's the author. He's the finisher of our faith. And he said, I've got to get to him. I hear him. Oh, I hear him. I just get out of my way. How about that? Being told by a blind man, get out of my way. Did you know he saw more of Jesus being blind than some people do with eyes? Amen. We get up and say, and it's a bad day. We go through life saying, I don't have anything. We think, well, Lord, when am I going to get what I want? Honey, God has blessed you if you saw the sun rise. God has blessed you if you got something to eat. God has blessed you. My Lord, give him a praise offering in the name of the Lord. My Lord. <laughs> oh, but you be quiet. Ain't going to do it. I got to get to it. Get out of my way. <laughs> Jesus stood still. Look at me. You watching by cell phone or iPad, make it larger. Look at me. The devil wants you to be selfish and think about nobody but number one. And he wants you to put yourself in a negative position and think because of past relationships, you'll never have another one. I love what my dad told me years ago. He said, learn from your mistake. It's called experience, honey. You can go on and have a better relationship. But for the most of my finances, it seems like there's a, some kind of curse. My my, my grandmama's finances are like this. My, my, my family's finances. Hey, stop it. You're a child of the most high God. Amen. We got to let God be sovereign. Amen. 
God knows your need. God knows your calling. My Lord, I, I hear you, Holy Spirit. And Jesus said, what do you want me to do for you? Everybody say, me. See, God wants to bless you. And he'll open up opportunities and timing is everything. And that's when you got to move. Last week, when the Spirit of God was moving, that's why I called a lot of the young converts, move, move now. You need these mothers of the church to pray for you. You need the dads of the church to pray for you. But we wait, and then we call the pastor, I wish. It's too late. How many understand what I'm saying? Listen. He got to Jesus. What do you want me to do? And all he said was, my sight. Lord, let me, let me just be able to see. God, I, I want to see the beauty of who you are. <laughs> I want to see the one who touched me. I want to see the one who's delivered me. I want to see the one who's called me today. Hmm. Let me let me see you more today. Let me see your handiwork today. Let me experience you for myself. In order for you to experience God, it's time for you to throw away your excuses. Lay them aside. Get rid of that garment. Get over this, Jordan, he told Joshua. Get over it. Move over it in the name of the Lord. You know, what if Lazarus, when he called Lazarus from the grave, said Lazarus, and, and Lazarus was a guy, he said, well, I'm dead. I'm not supposed to feel like this. How many times God blesses you say, boy, boy, I don't know where that, it came from God. <laughs> but the devil don't want you to see God. The devil don't want you to have a fulfilled destiny. He don't want you to see through the eyes of faith and speak that that is not as though it were. I asked Donnie, And Corey, they're grown men now. Donnie's a grandfather. And their precious mother who is friend on the outside. As far as leading the way along with those that helped her, Donnie, Margarita, Corey, so many, so many others. I, I can't name them all. I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. Everybody's important. She is that is she. But if you were to ask her, how many nights did you stay awake and pray? It was more than one. I see you older mothers wiping your eyes. I see you men. You see, beloved, you can't just wait on Sunday to get a spiritual fix to last you through the day. You got to pray. You got to partake of this word for yourself. Judy, I've known you a number of years. But you're a prayer intercessor. And Danny, I know your story. But I grant you he's here today because his mom and grandmama prayed for him. Sister Joe, that grandson up in the mountains that love you dearly. You've held him before God. You've held his whole family before God. <laughs> Just restore my sight. What the Spirit is saying right now, it's time for you to lay aside your excuses. It's time for you to get up get over your excuses, whatever they are. How many of you understand what I'm saying? Shout amen. Say, hey, I got to start walking for myself. If you fall down, honey, we're not going to condemn you. God knows. 
little old Addie. Let me tell you, she's stronger in her legs than I am. Donna keeps her. Donna called me one day and she said, Addie's walking. Well, she was crawling. I told her one day, I said, I said honey, I believe you could outrun an alligator <laughs> crawling. But now she's walking. She may not be walking like her mom and dad. She may not be walking like grandmama and, and papa, but she's walking. But when she when she falls down, she just and I and I I've never seen she just gets up just like it's nothing. Honey, don't even be around me when I'm down. The other day when I fell, I just sat there. <laughs> Why <are> you laugh? <laughs> We're not going to judge you. We just want you to get up. We want you to start walking. You got mothers in the church, fathers in the church, and a shepherd that loves you. You got a whole host of people, Lee and Marie. You got a whole host of people, the church council. You got a whole host of people, the church clerk. You got a whole host of people, the ladies of the church. Honey, let me tell you, they start praying for you. Look out, devil. My Lord, I said when the church starts praying for you, look out, devil, in the name of the Lord. My Lord, look out, devil. My Lord, my Lord. On the count of three, I want you to say I've got to rise up. One, two, three. I've got to rise up. In order for you to rise up, you say, I've got to throw whatever away. One, two, three. I've got to throw whatever away. And then you've got to just start moving. Jonathan, Kim, Kim brought the baby by last night before they left for a little trip. She, she had that walk going on. And I looked over and I told Kim, I said, she's got the strongest walk. You remember. But I remember how it was when I started serving God. I'd get in that altar and them brothers and sisters get around me, let go, turn loose, hold on. I've taken a little bit of time because there's too much junk out there nowadays for you to forfeit it and not experience the real genuine move of God in your life. It's not always going to be peaches and cream, but you're going to have an anchor of your soul that says God's going to get me through this. My Lord, now, as you said last week, your mama's ready. Your uncle's ready. Your siblings are ready. Your cousins are ready. Let's release granddaddy now. Amen. Granddaddy is on hospice. Let's release him now because we're on the anchor. Amen. We ain't got to trust in granddaddy's prayers no more. Moses is dead. But Joshua, step up in the name of the Lord and lead them on. My Lord and my God, be the man and be the woman that God's called you to be. And step over this Jordan. Get over, throw it aside, and move forward in the name of the Lord. Would you stand with me and give the Lord a praise offering? Glory then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee. Thou great Thou great Thou then sings my soul. what I feel. Let's just have an altar call this morning. Come on. Let's just everybody spend time in the altars. Come on. In the name of the Lord. Come on. Let's just pray and call on God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, how great thou art. How great thou art. 
like a militant army through many dangers, tolls, and snares. you for what you're continuing to do. We thank you that, dear Lord, we, we arise. We step over this Jordan. We hear your invitation to come. We throw the garment aside. We get up for time and is everything in the spirit world. We move forward. God, I pray blessings on the household of faith. God, I pray that you would bless every giver every tither, everyone who gives, Lord, unto thee of their finances. Oh, God, thank you for your blessings. We give you the praise. Now, devil, you listen. You're a liar. And as the shepherd of this fold, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. In the name of the Lord, I come against you. In the blood of the crucified, resurrected Lamb of God, I stand on the authority of the Word of God. For it is written that the Lord our God only shall we serve, and he we shall serve and indeed serve. In Jesus, Jesus' name, God bless you. Tarry as long as you like. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Oh, yes. Yes. 